am excited to be here with y'all on Instagram and on YouTube doing this live. And uh, today we are going to be talking about some windows. You can see I've got a little sample window behind me. I've got another older sample window behind me. And uh, we are going to be talking how to get sash windows, how to get the sash out of the window. So I'm going to show you guys uh, some quick tips and basically just the process for getting sash out of your windows. So uh, excited to have you guys all join it up. I see a bunch of people joining in here. Always awesome to see you on Wednesdays. Uh, just a quick, where are you guys from? Where is everybody visiting from? I'm going to check some of the comments here. I'm getting a little bit better at this uh, running an iPad and a phone at the same time to do Window Wednesday. So uh, throw it at me. I'm always curious where folks are coming from on Windsor, Window Wednesday Lives. And I will tell you right now here in Florida, it is it's still hot. It's October, but I am just cooked. I'm already sweating out here in the shop. Uh, so we got some folks from Kansas, Texas, my home state of Texas, San Jose, California. Do you know the way? You probably get that all the time. It's so annoying. I apologize for that so much. Washington State. All right. Uh, all over the place. Love hearing that. Just some of this a little bit so you folks uh, can make sure I can see. And uh, the way we do these for any of you that are new is if you have, I'm going to teach a little bit on uh, a particular topic on windows. And then if you have any questions on historic windows, you can see I've got a bunch of old sash behind me and some window samples. Uh, you can feel free to ask me anything on windows. It is a no holds barred kind of conversation about historic windows, doors, anything about, really anything about old houses. But we focus specifically on old windows on Window Wednesdays. And I'm really excited because this is the 50th episode of Window Wednesday Live. So if this is your first time here, you can go to my IGTV and uh, I've got a few of these on um, on Instagram right now, or sorry, on uh, YouTube right now, but there are 50 episodes on Instagram. So if you wanna check them out, lots and lots of topics. We've been doing this for over a year because I didn't hit every single week. Uh, my apologies, sometimes I do take a vacation. Um, but if you wanna check them out, Go check them out. I got a lot of different topics. We've talked paint, tools, techniques for scraping, for painting, for glazing, materials you use, all this kind of stuff, epoxies. Always information there, and you can scroll through the topics, tell you what's in there. But today, let's get started. We're gonna jump right into this, and I am gonna walk you through. I'm gonna pull this one up here a little bit. This is our little assembly on wheels to show you guys. And this is a standard double hung window. So what I'm gonna show you today is how to get the sash out because that question comes up a lot. Uh, you know, you've got a bottom sash that operates smoothly, no problem there. We got a top sash, that's the whole joy of a double hung window. This one, oh, my apologies, I need a little WD-40 on our sample. It sits out here in the shop, so it gets a little dusty. And you really need to look at how do I get this sash out of the window, because the reason you want to take them out is a lot of times you've just got painted up window sash. So I'm gonna roll this aside for just a second. I've got this little sample here. Um, that you can't see quite as well, but this is an actual historic window somebody pulled out. You can see you've got the whole jam, the sash are in here as well. It's a three over one, three lights over one light, and it's just painted shut, um, basically, this top sash. There's no ropes holding anything together where it should be anymore, right? They've broken off on this one. And um, the only thing holding this stuff in place is the paint and caulk from decades and decades. And that's the major obstacle to getting these sash out. How do you get sash out of a double hung window? First is you're gonna cut the paint free. So you start on this, on the top sash, all around the perimeter of the sash, where is the jam? On this one, I don't have any paint on it. This is my sample window that is basically a bare window just installed so it functions just like a regular double hung window. It's set up, you can see on this one, I've got the weights on here. Absolutely, everything's counterbalanced so that the great thing about a double hung window, if I want it there, sure, there, sure. Wherever you want it, it is perfectly balanced. It's a very, very simple sub, uh, setup, and that's why I prefer, one of the reasons I prefer to restore these windows. So, first thing you need to do to get it out is you're going to have to go around the perimeter where the sash meets the jam and cut it free. I've got a video uh, a little ways back, I go back about lots of paint stripping tools. For this, I usually use you can use a five in one, you can use a sash saw, that's a tool specific to this, that's great for cutting through caulk and paint. It's in my store, you can find those at craftsmanstore.com. Um, I use a trim pry bar or a molding pry bar to get in here. I use a razor knife, all, whatever you wanna to do to cut that paint free. Lots of different options, I talk about a lot of that in my courses and other videos, you can see it in action, but I wanted to do a live so you guys could ask me questions as we go through this stuff. So, 
to get this bottom sash out, what you have to do is it is held in, I'm going to roll this up here, by this piece of mold. This is called your interior stop. It presses up against, you can see the sash come up here, it presses up against your sash. This is just nailed in place. Um, sometimes you may see some screws and it has some screws holding it in place, but it is just a piece of molding. It is meant to be removed. Uh, you're not destroying the window if you pry this off and it's, you have to pry right in here. So I'll get my tool real quick. Here we go. This is what I mean by a molding pry bar. Also has a cat's paw for pulling nails, very useful. But the molding pry bar, I will get in here once I've cut the caulk free and I'm going to pry. I'm gonna turn this a little sideways so you guys can see. I'm gonna pry right into this joint and I'm going to pry this out. It you know, normally only has a couple nails. Now for demonstration to make this easier, I've only put one nail in here at the moment and this comes off. And you can see it's got a coped top on it. it uh, sometimes they're miter tops, but there's one across the top, one on each side. And to get the sash out, you really only need to get one out. You need to take one of these stops out. If you take both out, which I've done here, it makes it even easier. So you just take this out, you pull the nails out of it, and you've got an easier setup here. Now I've got this bottom sash, and what I can do is I can just slide this bottom sash out. It has ropes on either side. Boom, I can take that rope off. I can take this rope off. And I've got my bottom sash out. Totally easy. So on the sides of your sash, you see you've got these mortises. This is what connects the sash onto the jam. And the ropes will just sit there. There's a simple knot in them, uh, just like that. And uh, they will sit in that pulley and rest, and you can set your sash aside. And the advantage of this is you take that sash out, you can really work on the sash better. You can put it in your garage, on a work table, you can strip it a little bit easier than trying to stand on a ladder and do this. And you can do all of this from the inside. You do not need to take your sash out from the outside. My company, Austin Historical, we do a lot of window restoration. We've done eight story buildings and we do not have to work from the outside. You don't need scaffolding or ladders. If you're gonna pull the sash out, it makes it very easy to work on the whole window, which is why we prefer to take the sash out in order to work on it. So now you've got your bottom sash out. Great, what do I need to do to get my top sash out? Looks like it's trapped. You can see these elements on here. There's another piece of trim in here, right along here, that's called the parting bead. It's on both sides, it goes across the top. And that parting bead is basically trapping your top sash. It makes the top sash, the squeaky top sash, it makes the top sash stay where it needs to be. So to get that out, you may think this is part of the jam. It is indeed not part of the jam. It is another piece of removable trim on your window, on a double hung window. To get that out, the easiest way, one, you're gonna have to cut it free again. A lot of cutting of paint. That is really what's involved in these. If you've got a varnished window, you're probably in better shape than that. So the easiest way i found is cut around the perimeter of it, again, using a razor knife or a sash saw, five in one, whatever you want, a putty knife to get in here, break this up and get it free, get it moving. Once you can get this sash moving enough, then you can come in here and you can get this down all the way to the sill. The reason I wanna get it down to the sill, you can see I don't have any paint on my party bead, but these are just press fit. Every once in a while, you're gonna find um, a jerk who put this window in and put nails in the party bead. It does happen, I'd say, 20 to 30% of the time for me here in Florida and other windows I've worked on. But if it's not painted or if it's not, um, uh, if it's not nailed in place, then it's a matter of pulling this out and getting it out of the channel that it is fit into. So see, it can come out like that and I can pull it out and up away from the top sash and I've got this piece out. The parting bead, as you can see, is just this very simple half inch by three uh, quarters of an inch piece. Um, just a rectangular piece of trim. You could make it yourself on a table saw. You can get it, a lot of home stores actually will sell this. You may have a custom size. It may not be exactly half inch by three quarter to make it fit nice and snug, but not too tight. But once you get this out, now you're in good shape to get your top sash out. The parting bead, the easiest way to get the parting bead out is uh, I use some tools called, uh, they're, they're basically black build pliers. We sell them on our store. They are um, sheet metal pliers or running pliers that you can get for sheet metal work. We made some black ones, work really well for this. They're designed for this. They have some specific differences from those uh, sheet metal pliers that will really grab onto it. It has like a six inch bit on it or, or brace on it that grabs that parting bait and allows you to pull it out without typically destroying it. Sometimes it will get destroyed. You just need to pull it out as best you can. Once I've got that out, I apologize.
use for the squealing one. Then I can slide one side of my sash out and I can work this top sash out the same way. I've got one rope off, the other rope off, and now you've got your top sash on. Oh, sorry, my apologies, Instagram. We stopped for a second, we're back. Um, so here we go, top sash is out. Again, it's got the same thing. Here's where the rope knot goes, goes up through here into this area, and straight up there, you can set this out. And you've got your bottom sash and your top sash out. Now you've got a jam, very easy to work on, right? I can get access to all the things that I need to on here. I can scrape this free of excess paint. I can pull this other parting bead out if I need to, or I can leave it in. I've got pocket doors on here to get access to re-rope. I can change my ropes, do whatever I need to on the window and really access all of this sill to head uh, casing, all of this stuff, you've got really good access. And that's the advantage of pulling out the sash to work on your window. And also I can get, I can repair the trim out here on the outside if I need to from the inside of the house. I might dangle out the window a little bit, but I'm not like really outside on a ladder or scaffolding, which to me, this is a lot safer of an option. Then to put everything back in, you just kind of do it in reverse. You put your sash back in. I'm not going to rope it real quick, but I'll just put my sash back in here, and you have to smooth it back into the top sash track. It takes a little convincing sometimes. You put your parting bead back in. You have to put the top sash back in first, right? If you try and put the bottom sash in and the top sash back in, you put that in there. You can put your bottom sash back in. Boom, and I can put this whole thing right back together and put the stop on, your window's reassembled. A lot of this gets nailed. Again, parting bead, just pressure fit in place. Once you got it all in and roped and taken care of, then you put your interior stop on and you nail that in place so it holds and does what it needs to do. So I'm gonna scoop this to the side. Very, very simple setup. The only complexity that really is involved in a lot of this, one, at first, is just simply knowing how these work, right? Once you know how the, um, the windows put together on the double hung, which is by far the most common window in most places, this is the casement window. I think most people are able to grasp that, hey, you just have to cut it free and get the hinges swinging again and it's open. How do you get the sash out? Well, you unscrew it from the casement hinges, no problem. But on a double hung, it seems to trick a lot of people up. How do I get that out? Should I even take it out? Am I damaging it by doing that? You're not damaging it. It's totally intended for that. And that's the way that this really is meant to be serviced and work. That's how you change the ropes that's how you deal with all the uh, built up paint or anything like that. It's very hard to paint a double hung window when it's in place. Unlike a casement, you can open it, just like a door, paint it, wait for it to dry and close it. The double hung window, it's easy to get painted in place, painted shut when it's in place. Much easier if you can pull up the sash out, paint your jam, let it dry and cure, then paint your sash in the shop, let them dry and cure, and then you put it all back together. It's really a good way to do your double hung windows. So. We are reaching the Q&A section of our Window Wednesday Live. Um, always, as always, want to give a shout out to our sponsor. That is Abitron. If you uh, haven't checked out Abitron, they make fantastic wood, steel, concrete the, uh, restoration products. So they are, the stuff we use the most here around Austin Historical are their liquid wood and wood epochs. They're amazing for restoring uh, old rotted wood, damaged or missing wood. You can rebuild whole profiles. It's a structural epoxy. There's other stuff that you can use uh, by them that's called Abacrete. And uh, for concrete, they have Abaweld, they have stuff for metal. You can repair just about anything, restore a lot of projects on an old house, any old building with Abitron's products. So if you're on Instagram, give them some love, at Abitron Inc. Uh, YouTube, go give them some love. Check out their website, uh, abitron.com. They've got some really great stuff that you might wanna check out. So I've got some questions here. I'm gonna go through the questions. If you are on here and you have submitted some questions, let me know, let me hear them. Um, I'm willing to, we take questions here at the end and answer anything and everything you wanna know. So give them to me in the comments. Uh, what do I need to know about installing interior shutters? That is a great question. Well, if you're doing interior shutters, I'm assuming you're talking like plantation shutters. Um, there's a lot of different ways that they are installed. One of the ways I prefer for interior shutters to be installed is not install them on this part that we're talking about, the stop. Don't put them on your stop because then if you do need to remove to fix up your windows or change a rope or something like that, change a chain, you're going to have to take the whole shutter assembly off. I largely prefer to put them on the casing of the window. 
I think the casing of the window, which is the trim on the inside, I think that's the best way to put shutters. My last house, we had um, interior plantation shutters and they were just screwed onto hinges, uh, very nice surface hinges on the casing. You could paint it the same color, you could paint the hinges if you wanna hide them. We just did some nice brass hinges and uh, put them on the casing and that way I could open the windows and I could take the sash out. I could just take the stop off so it's not on the way. Um, other than that, there's not a lot of do's and don'ts for um, plantation shutters, um, other than how you use them in the summer and winter, right? So in the summer, you can have your, you wanna have your louvers facing down. In the winter, you wanna have the louvers going up. It, what it does is in the summer, if the louvers are down, it keeps the hot air, hot air is rising, so it can't go in through the louver. Whereas if your louver are like this, then the hot air can go in and into the room. You have the louver like that, hot air is trapped between the plantation shutter and the window and it keeps it out of the house. Same opposite in the winter, switch them like that, keeps the cold air in, it can't, because the cold air is sinking, can't come into the house nearly as often. So they're very effective at keeping temperature regulation in the house. Uh, please, if y'all are new here, shoot me some questions. I'm gonna keep going through these, but always love to hear your comments. Uh, is there an easy way or pointers to repair old barn windows that cannot be removed? Um, everything that I talk about, like in terms of like how to restore your window, how to get the window out, doesn't have to be done. I prefer to do it because I think it's easier to do that if you're gonna remove the window, but you can certainly do it in place. So uh, most of the steps in window restoration involve paint stri scraping. You don't have to scrape to bare, bare wood. You can scrape as far as you want so until you get to a, a clean substrate, right? You wanna remove any of that loose flaking paint that's having problems, get to a clean substrate. And then you've got um, replacing the glazing putty. You've got, you've got to prime it, you gotta paint it. Um, you're going to cut it free, obviously, so it operates if it is an operable window. But if you don't want to do it, uh, take it out and do it in the shop or in your garage or something like that, you can do it on place. If it's on a ladder or anything like that, that's the first the way I got started doing windows. Didn't really know how to take them out. Wasn't sure if I should. And I just scraped them, sanded them, painted them, and did, glazed them, did it all in place because I was like, this is easier for me. My ropes were all intact and I didn't want to mess with it and cause a problem. So definitely an option for you if you want. Um, another one on here is installing spring bronze on a curved frame any different than straight sides. Uh, yes, it is. So spring bronze, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, spring bronze is a weather stripping that I really highly recommend. I think it's a great metal weather stripping. It, once it's installed, it requires, it's one of the few things on an old house requires zero maintenance. Uh, you can't try not to get paint on it because you're going to foul it up a bit, but it's bronze, so it's not going to rust. It does age and get that deep copper color like a penny. But um, when it's put on, it is sprung, it goes around the perimeter of a window or a door, and it creates a really nice air seal. So it's a very long lasting, I've seen installations 100 plus years. So definitely worth the time and money to do it. You have to usually take your sash out in order to do it. Or if it's a casement or a door, you can just open it and install it right like that. Very easy to do. If you do it on a curved installation, the one thing you do need to know is usually that's a concave curve, right? So something like this, it's con uh, concave. And um, if you do that, what you're gonna need to do is I will cut, depending on the, you know, if it's a real tight curve or kind of a more gradual curve or anything like that, you're going to have to cut relief cuts. So on, uh, every inch or two inches, um, more often if you've got a window that is uh, like a tighter curve. The tighter the curve, the tighter the, the relief cuts need to be. The reason for that is when you go do a tight curve on spring bronze, it really is not effective on that curve. You cut those relief cuts and it will be able to bend down and press onto your window. I have some stuff on my book, Old Windows In Depth, that you can get, you can get an ebook or a print book of it. And that one is uh, a great way to uh, have a tutorial on how to install that, where to cut the curves and how to do that. Because there's a nailing flange on spring bronze. You nail that all up and then you can cut those curves often enough that you are able to get the spring bronze to bend down into the position that you want it to be. So um, definitely a good option there. Move this over a little bit. Got some questions on here. Uh, thank you for your video on storm windows. Awesome, I made three so far for my old farmhouse. That is awesome, Jonathan. I love hearing that you are making storm windows on your house. That's really fantastic. Uh, let's see, any other questions here? I've got one. Is there a product you suggest for weather stripping replacement on mid-century modern aluminum sliding windows. Um, it really depends on the setup that's on there. You, you wanna make sure if you're doing any metal weather stripping on a window and it's a metal window that you don't use dissimilar metals. You're gonna get what's called um, 
galvanic corrosion. So if you put like um, a steel and you put aluminum together, they will cause each other to corrode. You wanna use similar metals. So bronze and brass with each other, or copper, they're very similar. Um, steel with steel or stainless steel with it, things like that, don't mix metals. It depends on the layout of your windows. There's a lot of variety in mid-century aluminum sliding windows. Um, I have often used, depending on the sliders, a lot of times you see the awning ones. Those have used some felt weather stripping, which works well. There also are some self-adhesive um, silicone bulbs, which work well. If you've got a slider, silicone and felt may not be your best way. Felt might work well, but silicone bulbs are not gonna work well. You probably wanna look at like some self-adhesive uh, vinyl flanges that might be able to seal up some of those areas that you're having drafts. Another good option, if you've got windows that uh, are really difficult to weather strip, but you're looking for some air sealing and some efficiency, is you could use uh, indo windows or an interior storm window, or if you don't have exterior storm windows, putting on a storm window, whether it's inside or outside, um, is an, a fantastic way to up the efficiency of a single pane window. So you don't have to replace your windows, you can take a single hung window and make it meet the current codes or very close, depending on where you live, very close to the current energy codes by adding an exterior storm window or even adding an interior storm window. And there are options out there. The interior ones I'll use are things like Indo or Inner Glass, uh, Magnetite is another one. There's several options out there you can find and research for yourself. But um, I find for air sealing, adding an interior storm window is usually my best bet uh, to, uh, to work on. I see somebody wrote how to tile. Uh, I think you are on the wrong window Wednesday. I'm not sure, I'm not a tile expert and nor is the topic of this tile. Um, but um, I've done a little bit of tile, but just enough to be dangerous. So do you recommend priming the rabbit before replacing or before reglazing on an old window? Yes, 100%. If you have an old window and you're going to reglaze it, I really recommend one of two things. You're either going to prime that wood glazing rabbit where the glazing putty goes around the glass or you're going to um, wet it with uh, boiled linseed oil. The reason you want to do, or you can use shellac, that's another option as well, but the reason you want to do that is because when you take glazing putty, it's usually an oil-based compound, the wood wants to suck those oils right out, especially old woods that are very thirsty, they're going to suck the oils right out of the putty and they will shorten the life of the putty. We're not talking it's going to shorten it to weeks or anything, but you're going to have a putty that is instead of lasting 30 or 40 years, maybe 50 years, you're gonna last 10, maybe 15 years because it has dried up and crumbled out faster. So putty loses its serviceable life once it has dried out and crumbled. And so by priming or sealing those rabbits with some oil, you prevent the wood from sucking the oil right out of the glazing putty and you extend the life of it. So that's why we recommend doing that. It gives you a much better performance, much longer life to it. So definitely a uh, best practice, not required, but definitely um, the best way to do it. Uh, next question, do you feel loose tenons are acceptable for sash construction? Um, I do feel like they can be acceptable for sash construction. Um, I don't wanna have loose like banging around in there, but if you're talking like, if you take the glass out of a window sash, a lot of times it can rack a little bit. Once the glass is put back in, you should have a sturdy window. If you have loose tenons, you can nail those back up. I prefer not to glue them, but traditionally they were not glued because the glue obviously seals that joint and then you're stuck with it. So let's try and just put it back together. I like to use either a one and uh, one, one and three eighths is the thickness of a window sash. So one and a quarter inch, 15 gauge nail is great, or you can use wood pegs, dowels, whatever you want to to hold it in place and allow it to then be repaired later in the future instead of when you glue it, glue it be like, well, I guess that is what it is, it's done. So um, I, I don't mind having slightly loose tenons, but ultimately if you're building a window sash, let's have it really tight. Um, I don't have any videos. Another qu comment on here was how to build a window. Um, more than, that's more than I can do in this process. I am gonna put some content together. There are a lot of other folks that have got some content out there on how to build windows, but I, um, I've been getting asked for it a lot, so I am gonna put some content together on here for how to build windows. You'll see that showing up on YouTube, and I'll do some highlights on Instagram, but it's gonna be a longer form content because there's a lot involved in building a window. We've shot some of it, but looking at it, I was like, man, there's just so many steps. It was complicated to try and put together a video that wasn't an hour long to show all this stuff. So um, another one, can you renew glazing putty uh, with boiled linseed oil? You can renew um, uh, glazing putty with boiled linseed oil. It can be very effective. Uh, it just depends um, how far gone it is. If it just needs a little re, uh, renewing, a little extra life, then definitely an option. 
Another comment I've got, I have a 1915 cottage. Seller replaced historic windows, don't we love them, with vinyl. Ugh. Luckily, the pulleys, rope, and weights are still intact. All right, I'm a lifelong carpenter. Where can I find old window construction plans? Uh, best place to find old window construction plans um, are some of the uh, old autos. Uh, they're old autos, carpenters, journals. They're basically some books you can find them on eBay if you just Google old autos. Um, there are some woodworking plans, some old school, old school woodworking books that'll teach you how to build sashes uh, or sash, depending on how you like to pluralize it. Um, but uh, in your case, it sounds like, yes, you could just take those vinyl windows out, keep your original jams, fix them up a bit, and build new sash. Or if you're really fortunate, you could go to an arch architectural salvage yard and buy some sash that'll fit in there, and you can restore those sash. But since you're a carpenter, I don't have any problem. Like, like get, to, get busy building it. We'll try and get some content out here about how to build windows shortly so that you can see the process and try and walk your way through it. In the meantime, there's another good channel you might want to check out. I don't know how much he has on there about how to actually build the windows, but I know he builds a lot, and that is Wood Window Makeover or uh, Wood Window Museum, I believe, is the other channel, Artisan Army. Check them out. They've got some good content on how to build windows. He does more so of that than even the restoration side these days, and he's an excellent carpenter. So, um, yes. Um, all right, guys, we are finishing up here. No more comments for the day. Thank you all for being here, Window Wednesday. We do this every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern, unless there's something crazy going on like a hurricane here or, hey, I'm a dad and sometimes uh, duty calls, so uh, family is first. So uh, thank you guys all for being here. Do give some love to Abitron, abitron.com, or at Abitron Inc. on Instagram uh, so that you can support our sponsor because they support us, make it possible for us to do this and sweat in the shop after everybody's gone home for the day. So I'm going home to my family. You guys take care and save those old windows. Thanks a lot.